Alright guys, last part. Soap is all pushed down and milled. Once you add your oils, you just want to keep mushing. If you have any splits, try to avoid the splits in the bag, otherwise the soap is going to squeeze out. But you're going to knead the soap gently to mix it together. Mine is all ready and nicely mixed. You can see my little brown spots of benzoline, but that's okay. It's pretty good to get. This is where your scissors come in, and you are going to have to put your gloves back on if you don't have them on already. You're going to tilt the soap to one side of the bag, like so. Let me try and zoom out here for you so you can see some more. You're going to tilt the soap to one side of the bag and pinch off um, the top here. I'm pinching off um, a corner right here so it's flat like that. And you're going to use this like a piping bag just like you would for cakes thanks to Out Brown. A lot of people are doing this. It's cheaper than buying a piping bag. Um, that's where your scissors are in. Now you're going to pipe into your molds. Now I'm hoping that you will be able to see me um, piping into the molds and I'm not in your way. It's pretty simple. You're just going to try and keep it down. And you're going to turn your bag, gather up the corners, and tilt yourself down towards your hole. And you're going to squeeze just like the piping bag. Trying to get every little bit out. Now I take and gather my my bag up up like this. And you want to work fast at this point because it will cool very quickly. And to the bees. You want to give a tap. Pipe some more. Now, because it has oil in it and your mold is um, greased, you don't want to tap too hard. You do want to you know, get it down in there. Now, if you find that your hole's not big enough during the piping, just tilt the bag back. If mine is not as wide as I would want it to be, and cut off a bigger piece and go back to piping. There we go. Hold up, give a tap. You want to try and keep this as even as you can without spilling over because spillage is waste. But you do want to make sure it, it's pretty snugly secure. Okay, we'll do the next one. All the time, squeezing down on the bag. I'm hoping y'all can see this. Let me turn this this way for you. The reason for the tapping is to try to remove any air bubbles that you're creating. Um, I don't think I'm creating that many, but you're going to tap it anyway and be sure. Now, if you do happen to notice big pieces of carrot in there, don't worry about it. I mean, but I don't really have any big ones. I see some little um, orange specks. But pretty well pureed otherwise. Alright, so those are good. They're going to sit out of the way for a little bit. Now, I don't have that much left in this bag, so I'm not going to use my other mold. I'm going to go with my other ones that are already pre greased. I say natural, handmade, and then blank. And I'm going to use those and fill those up. Remember, squeeze down on your bag. Tapping ensures even distribution throughout the rest of the pan. Okay. 
can use your glove and it cooks it back in or it's what side that you want it to be on. I do this sometimes, try and push it into the corner some. And then I'll wipe my hands on that blank mold because that's going to be my excess mold. So I'm going to tuck that down real good. usually gets it done. So I have this little bit left in here. I'm going to squeeze out and tap that down as well. Now, I get my little soap balls by taking the excess soap and making a soap ball out of it. I'm not going to do that this time. There's not that much excess left in the bag to do that. Okay. So, this is what your piping bag should look like after you're done. If you can, you know, wait till it cools, you can go in there and have patience and scrape out what other soap is left, like here in the corners or stuff. Um, dip it back into your hot water if it's still on, but I'm just going to throw the bag away. And tap down the main of the soap in here. All that moving around is just to get it nice and even. So, we have six soaps made. Our Cara Puree soap mix. And those are going to sit and cool for about 5-10 minutes or so. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this in the time allotted, but I'm going to cover it with Saran Wrap. Yes, it is going to be hot, and you will be able to, at this point, just pat down on the saran wrap to try and flatten out any little creases or bubbles you have at the top or bulges from the piping to so flatten it out some more. And just, you know, ensure that it gets into more. So you're going to cover it, and wrap the end. Next one. Saran wrap. Cover it. Doesn't matter if it's even or not, as long as it's covered. And this is to ensure that you do not pick up smells from your refrigerator or your freezer. Rather, um, the saran wrap will keep those out. Try and get that as straight as you can, especially on these rectangle molds. Pat that down. And this enables you to coax it back into the mold the way that you want it to be as well. Straighten that out. That straight. You can pat down on this one as well. And even it out some underneath. Wrap it up. Now they're all nice and wrapped. I'm going to be using um, my husband's sushi um, bamboo roller to um, separate the two because they're heavy. And this will distribute the weight evenly when I put them in the freezer. And that is about it. I'm going to